What's going on YouTube? My name is Alex and this is Ask the Cheese Gaming. I'm here with a new review for you today. In this video, I'll be taking a look at Wipeout 64 for, you guessed it, the Nintendo 64. It was developed by Cyanosis and published by Midway with the North American release of November 3rd, 1998. Wipeout 64 is a follow-up sequel to Wipeout 2097 for the PlayStation and Sega Saturn, and it was later also ported to the PC. Honestly, this game is more of an expansion than a sequel per se. Many people have compared the Wipeout series to F-Zero because you race futuristic crafts at absolute breakneck speed across, in this game, seven different tracks. The difference between Wipeout 64 versus, say, F-Zero, is that in this game, like Extreme G, you have weapons. Speaking of weapons, there's a very heavy imbalance between them. Some of the weapons, such as the electrical bolt or the mines, do very minimal damage. Meanwhile, you can acquire what are called super weapons, which do massive damage. An example of one of the super weapons you can acquire is almost a mini Gatling gun. Other weapons in this game are more your standard assortment of missiles, lasers, boosts, and a cool little neat feature in this game when you're going through sharp turns is you can activate an autopilot. This game, with the weapons, creates an element of strategy to it. Do you want to try to eliminate all the other racers in the course? Ignore the weapons and focus purely on racing and speed? Or, like me, find a happy medium between the two. I never played the Wipeout series for the PlayStation or for the Sega Saturn, so I can't talk about the controls or graphics for those games, but in regards to Wipeout 64, the controls on the Nintendo 64 handle very, very well. The biggest hurdle that I've experienced is when playing the game, you have to learn how and when you need to air brake around sharp sudden turns. And, like Extreme G or F-Zero, you come across some split-second sharp turns in which you need to react. This makes it so that track memorization is an absolute must if you want to succeed in this game. If you don't, this game is brutal hard. Thankfully, the frame rate in this game holds up very, very well, which does help you feel that sense of speed and enjoyment of the game. It's quite remarkable that for a game that has you moving at such fast, breakneck speeds, the frame rate holds up in all except four-player multiplayer. Now, to move on to my next point about this game, an area where the Wipeout 64 suffers is the lack of game modes. There's no Grand Prix or circuit to speak of in the game. Instead, you get what are called challenges. After beating all the challenges, playing the single player, and playing the multiplayer, which is pretty much just like playing the single player, there's not a whole lot of replay value to the game. The last area of Wipeout 64 I want to take a look at is the music and sound effects. Thankfully, they do not disappoint. The music theme, which is kind of a subtle but fast trancey or techno beat, fits very nicely in the motif of the game. And the sound effects really help you feel that sheer sense of speed or impact when you're using one of the more powerful weapons. Say you hit them with that Gatling gun, you really feel that impact as you just watch your opponent explode and become eliminated. Well, that's about all for this review, everybody. If you enjoyed this review, as always, please like, share, and subscribe. I hope everyone is staying safe in these crazy, tumultuous times. And if there's a Nintendo 64 game you'd like to see me talk about, or for another genre, leave me a comment down below, and I'll see what I can do. And as always, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next review. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.